figured I'd start this off right by hydrating. <laughs> so I'm sitting by the beautiful creek in Sedona, Arizona, where I live. And I'm in this gorgeous nature nook. And it feels like the perfect spot to get activated. <laughs> so while you guys tune in, and this is a special uh, happy birthday shout out to Francesca. <laughs> I see you. So while you guys are tuning in, I'm just gonna go ahead and start shuffling the cards, okay? For those of you who have never tuned into these activations before, they don't actually have anything to do with the moon. The moon is used as a measurement of time so that we can keep track of four quarters within each monthly cycle for the collective consciousness. So did you know that before the tarot was on these cards, they were actually archetypal symbols inscribed into uh, gold plates, metal plates. And this sequence that was in inscribed on these metal plates was the system of guidance used by the ancient Egyptians. So I get a lot of people who immediately see the cards out and they think, oh, it's just another tarot video, exit out, this is spam. Uh, but I wanna offer you a different perspective that these archetypes or characters are actually the different aspects of your psyche. They are within you and they're actually the building blocks of all of creation. I recently published a book called The Royal Path, activating the archetypal alliance within. And that book, talks about this. It talks about how the story of the tarot is one that lives inside your blood. So it's not just a bunch of cards. These characters, these cards are representing the different aspects of not only the individual but also the collective mind. So what is the final quarter activation all about? I call this activation the in-between activation. This week to me is the in-between week because we're closing up this last cycle and we're beginning a new one. So we've got one foot in the old world and one foot stepping into the new. So last week we had the full moon and since then we've integrated all that came into the light. Now we're ready to close up the last chapter and prepare for the next. That's what the final quarter activation is all about. So go ahead and whatever thoughts you've been carrying with you all day, all week, all month, maybe for many months, go ahead and set them aside just for this moment. Maybe heavy feelings you've been carrying or a, a curiosity that's killing you, it's eating away at you. Just for this activation, set it aside. And if at the end of this activation, you feel ready to welcome those cyclical thoughts and feelings back in, go ahead. But for right now, set it aside. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So rather than creating a space for these, these answers or this wisdom to come in, let's just tune into the space that already exists. What is the most expansive space that we can tune into? the space of the heart that place is infinite and I'll meet you there here now so right now what you should feel is more peace than you've been feeling all week all month you should be feeling clear and empty just for now Again, feel free to welcome back in those cyclical thoughts and those feelings you've been carrying, but just for now, I want you to feel peace, openness, emptiness, so that you can be the vessel for this information to come in. If you're so busy hearing those same things that have been repeating themselves inside your head, then how will you have the ability to tap into that quiet voice of intuition that's about to speak to us? So right now you should feel clear, peaceful, open, empty, ready to receive. And everybody who's tuned in right now is creating this space together, this energy together, by tapping into the ultimate space of the heart, right? And if you have a favorite group with people 
that are interested in lighting up the world like you are, please go ahead and share this live so that we can have other beings around the world tuning in and helping us to welcome in this information. Share it with your favorite groups, with your friends, with your family, those who are awake, those who are awakening, or those who you feel are ready to awaken. Go ahead and share. Let's activate together. This message reaches all across the world, so know this. You're so not alone. We're all in this together. We're all uniting in this one timeless truth that's about to be revealed. So thank you archetypes in advance for showing us exactly what needs to be shown, what needs to be revealed. I thank you for revealing it. Go ahead and connect to the deck however you know how. You can use your imagination to send a thread of light from your inner eye to the deck, from your heart to the deck. You could just feel yourself here with me right now in this peaceful place. All right, what are we closing up and leaving behind ready to tie up and leave in the last cycle. What are we now weaving in to our lives? What can we expect to be experiencing soon with the new moon, new cycle? Give us a, a taste, please, of the next lesson to come. And we'll call this one our challenge and chariot. Okay, so what are we leaving behind? Knight of Pentacles. This is what this looks like to me right now as far as the collective and everything we've been experiencing. It's time to take a break, take a rest. We've been working really hard. We've been doing, 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 going, going, going. Really putting pressure on ourselves to manifest something of the realizations we've been having or the growth we've been cultivating. We've been on this mission to manifest something of all the realizations we've been having. We've been like, all right, how do I make this happen? How do I, how do, I do my part? Right, because there's so much going on, and so we've been very quick to respond. Looks like the service is a little low, but we got this. So it looks like we've been running with our ideas, running, 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 and it's time to really pause. Time to rest, time to pause. What are we to expect for the new cycle? This is a nice <laughs> relief here. The Six of Swords. Just look at that image. There's a mother and child being rowed to calmer waters. This is the initiation where after so much has been said and so much has been done, so much chaos, so much difficulty, so many challenges, we're finally rowing on to smoother waters. Things are calming down. We've just gone through a major rite of passage we're ready to rest and let the waters of life carry us now. So it's just confirming the first message. We've been on the go, on the go, on the go, doing our best to bring in all that we've learned into manifestation, to apply all that we've learned to our reality. And now it's like, oh gosh, okay, I'm ready to take a break. Thank goodness that part is over. I need a little rest because the ups and downs are inevitable. And of course, we're going to come to another challenge sooner or later. So let's really take advantage of this time to chill out, take a breather, and let someone else row us along for, for a minute, for a little bit. So that message seems really clear. I think it's just time for 
us to just kind of sit with everything that's happened, know that there's going to be more challenge. There's going to be always the next initiation that we're going to experience. So let's gather our power. Let's take a rest and enjoy all the blessings that abound right now before it's time again, right? That's the challenge and the gift is the Six of Swords. So is it a challenge perhaps for some of us to rest? To stop trying so hard? To relax and be carried by the current of the waters of life? Because that to me feels like, yeah, there is a challenge there. There are so many of us that aren't wanting to slow down. We wanna keep going. We wanna keep going with this momentum we've been building. But we must understand we will burn out if we don't take the break. If we don't take a breather. Something that I keep seeing in my mind's eye is this, this guy who's rowing the boat. We can all take turns being that guy, you know. We can all take turns being that one pushing the boat while everybody else takes a break, relaxes. It's important for us all to do this or we will burn out. So it's the challenge and it's also the gift. How much can you let go? No matter how much you've been building the momentum, no matter how much you have going for you now, right now, how much can you just surrender for a moment and take a break, maybe for the next few days, maybe for the next week until the new moon and just kind of let your body let all of your bodies, your emotional body, your mental body, your physical body, catch up to everything that's happened. So much has taken place. Is it a challenge for you to rest right now? And when you hear that, that suggestion to take a rest, does it maybe feel good to you? Does it maybe feel like, wow, you know what? That's exactly what I need right now. Just remember to take the breaks especially when it seems like there's so much momentum building and there's so much to do, that's when it's really time to look within and ask, do I maybe need a little break before I keep going to nurture myself, to replenish my energy? Let's check out another Card. for where we are at this week okay so we're wrapping up this knight of pentacles we're ready to take a break we're ready to stop moving 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 so much and trying so hard the future is showing this okay learning to take that break to rest be open to just surrendering for the moment but what are we feeling today what are we feeling right now and how can we navigate this current energy to best prepare for this break this rest <laughs> we have another night Knight of Wands. So we have two knights so far in this reading. This is where we're at right now. Heat. This is the fire of fire card. Knights are fire. Wands are fire. Fire is spirit. So it makes sense to me. We're feeling supercharged right now. We're feeling on fire. We're feeling full of passion and energy. And so it's easy to want to continue this. Two nights. It's easy to want to continue this. Oh, but I'm burning right now. Oh, but I'm on fire. But I'm, there's not a better time to act because I have so much energy to burn right now. Well, why not sit with that? Why not sit with the creativity, sit with the feeling behind the creativity? That spiritual passion, that feeling of joy, excitement. 
why not sit with it? Why do we have to make something of it? Why do we always have to do something with it? Perhaps if we just sit with it and rest a bit, we'll be able to integrate this energy in a way that it can be used more sustainably for the future. You don't want to just burn your fire out completely. When you're feeling that fire, rather than using it for some external purpose and applying it to some material endeavor, how about just self-reflecting while you're in that feeling, while you're experiencing that frequency, just self-reflecting. Wow, what does my fire really feel like? What does it look like? Maybe I can journal about what it feels like to have this sort of fire activated in me. How can I channel it inwardly to fuel my inner explorations and my inner work, my inner projects? There's so much that we're already experiencing inside that we have to integrate, right? Before we start the new moon, the new cycle next week. So how about using this fire to digest what's happening inside? If we use all this fire and creativity and energy in just another earthly pursuit or another material matter, what fire is going to be there to digest everything that's already happened so far? How can we kindle that fire to keep it going, to keep it burning? We're at a pivotal point right now where if we continue to use our fire for outside projects and outside circumstances to just jump into the next thing, we're just gonna burn out. So the archetypes are showing us here for this final quarter activation that we would do well to kindle this fire and understand that the, the best thing we could possibly do with it is get to know it, reflect upon our own light and see how this, this manifests. How is this fire manifesting for me? And how can I really become familiar with the effects of this inner fire burning so that I can, in the future, when I need this fire, call upon it more gracefully, more efficiently, in a way that reveals I am so familiar with this element, with its power, and with how it works from inside of me. If we don't take this time to pause, and really self-reflect upon this fire that we're feeling right now, individually and collectively, we won't have the opportunity to fully familiarize ourselves with this holy sacred power of this fire. But if we pause right now and we turn inward and we do reflect upon this feeling, this fire, this frequency, then we can learn something great. We can ultimately develop a greater understanding of how to use this element whenever we need it in the future. This is the true magician's path. How do you think the magician would respond right now to this lesson? The magician would say, all right, I'm gonna find the right space, the right place to practice this, to self-reflect. I'm going to put myself in an environment, maybe right by the water, right? Like I'm at right now for that contrast, that elemental contrast. I'm going to put myself in an environment where I can best reflect upon this fire and how I am one with it and how it can work for me. The elements don't just serve us in the outside world, they also serve us in the inside world. There is no barrier for elemental magic. So rather than using what we've got to keep pushing, keep fighting everything that's happening for us collectively, globally. We can use the elements to work on the inside. Fire is a very active element. So we don't need to go anywhere, do anything to utilize this fire. The action is inside. So how can we reflect on our own fire as well as the collective fire and see how this fire can help the one, can be helpful for the collective as one? 
we already realized that it won't be a very productive thing for us to just use this fire on some external circumstance and burn it all out. So how instead can we see a positive image of this fire being used for the highest good of the one? I encourage you to do visual meditations. See this fire, you know, maybe you wanna see a violet flame. Maybe you wanna see, um, you know, the colors that you see in this card. But I invite you to invoke that sacred fire within your mind's eye and connect with it and ask, how can this help heal me? How can this help heal the one? Maybe you can see this violet flame sweeping over the earth, sweeping over all that which has been keeping us in the dark. So imagination is key, right? Visualization is key with inner healing and also feeling. It's like when we get a fever, our body is producing that fever so that we can fight off an infection, right? That heat is sacred. It's powerful. It's a tool, just like the cold is. Hot and cold are both just, they're just opposite sides of the scale of the same thing, temperature. So how can we specifically right now focus on turning up the heat, but in the right areas? We already have this fire burning. How can we redirect the element of fire as it exists within us and all around us toward that which actually will benefit from its heat? What needs the heat turned up on it? What, how can you use the heat to burn away whatever is not serving any longer? So sit with this fire Forget building and making something of it in the outside world. We don't need to do that. We just need to sit with it. We just need to sit with it. Sitting with it, understanding it, and redirecting its power will help us to get to the other side. Wherever that is, wherever we need to be, it's not so much about the where, about the setting of where we're going to end up, but it's about what we're doing right now and seeing how the results of that will bring us to exactly where we need to be. I just want to show you guys a little bit of the beauty that surrounds us here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this final quarter activation. Whoosh, whoosh, sit with the fire. I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling like I'm definitely sitting with the fire. It's burning. I'm in the desert. So I'm feeling it. It's also sitting on my hair. I'm feeling that too. <laughs> so something that I love about these activations is the community that's been created around it. I have a private group on Facebook called The Royal Path. Feel free to join that group and let us know what you experienced during this activation. And then stay tuned for future activations. They happen every single week. And we can all share in The Royal Path group and talk about you know, our different insights. How do we feel we're experiencing the energies that show themselves, themselves in this reading? How can we expand on this bigger picture all together as one so anything anything that you want to share that could benefit the hive mind please feel free to do it there in the royal path group on facebook please share this video with your family and friends if you think they could benefit from this message of honing the fire the inner fire every week on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we meet for a Zoom class on the occult symbolism of the tarot. And we just did Arcanum 6, The Lovers, also known as The Two Paths. So this Wednesday will be The Chariot, also known as The Conqueror. By the way, Chariot in Hebrew is Merkava. So this card is about your light body and ascension. So if you're interested, private message me and we'll get you in on these classes. Good to see you guys all here activating with me. And know that if you're not watching this live, whenever, and when, whenever you watch this and wherever you are when you're watching it, it's in 
divine order always. Nothing exists outside of divine order. Okay, I also have a YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic and hit subscribe. That way you get notified when, when these activation videos are uploaded. If you wanna catch them live, make sure you're following here on Facebook, but just look to the moon if you need to know when the activation is gonna be. I always do the activation on the day of or the day before those four points, the new moon, the first quarter, the full moon, and the final quarter. All right, so make sure you stay aware of those times and meet us here and join in the activation portal. Thank you so much, you guys, for opening up this portal with me. And I look forward to seeing all of your shares in the Royal Path group. Shalom.